Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash I don't work here, lady, where people confuse regular customers as employees. And in this episode, oh boy, Karens are at it again, guys. We've got power tripping managers, Karens threatening people, and OP tells a story about her encounter with a psycho creep in a hotel. Guys, the stories are wild. I hope you enjoy them. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. So this is gonna be a short story. It was a couple of months ago when I was on my lunch break and I decided to go eat at this Hawaiian barbecue place in the same plaza as my workplace. So I'm sitting there eating my food when a family walks in and stands at the cashier stand. The cashier was in the back and there's a bell to call them. The father then starts loudly tapping his feet in that annoying I'm waiting sort of way while looking right at me. I'm kind of unconfrontational, so I look down, ignore him, and keep eating. That's when he says, service here is terrible. I'm gonna yelp that employees here ignore customers when they enter. What kind of place is this? Get off your ass and serve us. Well, now I have to speak up because I don't want that place to get overrun by bad reviews if I can't help it. So I go, uh, you know I don't work here, right? Hearing me say that, the dude suddenly does a 180 and starts apologizing, saying he thought I was a lazy employee. And then he says one thing that I'll never forget. He says to me, you're lucky because I was this close to throwing your food in your face. Imagine if you were an employee. I just tell him to ring the bell and I finish my food and leave. I go back to work and one hour later, I see them in my store. I just hurry to a different area to avoid them. Oh man guys, the entitlement of that dude is astounding. And I can't believe he basically said to OP, Oh, you're a fellow human and not a minimum wage server? I'm so sorry. Like, imagine if I treated you the same way I treat servers. You'd have food all in your face. Again, that is some disgusting behavior, sir. And guys, I've said this so many times, like even if OP was an employee and eating, it's very clear that they're on a break or something and definitely would not stop eating to serve a self-entitled a-hole. Especially after those comments. Because we all know that calling someone a lazy employee and then demanding service aggressively really makes them want to help you. Okay, so remember when smartphones were becoming a thing? Well, my dad is an old, old soul, and he intentionally refused to participate in this, quote, stupid trend. He kept his old, non-smartphone, which malfunctioned after some time. So for around two years, my dad did not have a phone, until one day, he decided to give in and buy a smartphone. Now, you know how old phone numbers, which are no longer used, go back into circulation after some time? Well, apparently, the phone number which my dad received previously belonged to a prostitute. So when my dad got his new smartphone, what happened is, my dad would receive several messages a day, of men asking for adult service. Is. Now some of them were very explicit and the men were describing in detail what they'd like done to them or what they would like to do. Whereas some others were more shy and polite and they would ask if there's availability at 3pm. And let's not get into how many nude pictures of men that he would get sent all the time. Most of the customers wouldn't back off after my dad told them they had the wrong number. They would insist that it can't be the wrong number because, quote, I have this phone number saved in my phone book. Or, you're just trying to wheeze a lot of meeting with me. There was a guy, however, who somehow got the impression that this adult worker gave her phone to some pimp. So he would send messages every day asking, when will she be available? Or, can you put her on the phone? Luckily, for some reason, there weren't many calls, just messages. And the really distressing part is that most of those people wouldn't understand what no means. You have to tell them no 10 times before they realize that they're not gonna meet up with the woman that they wanted. I can't imagine it's very pleasant for these women to meet up with such clients. My dad was furious and he put the blame on me and my mom for pushing a smartphone on him, as he was convinced that it had something to do with the new phone being a smartphone. The messages wouldn't stop. So after a few weeks, he had to get a new number, and it was only then when he realized that smartphones are not necessarily linked to prostitution. Oh my goodness, that poor dad. Like, imagine resisting getting a smartphone for the longest time because you're against new technology. And the first experience you have after getting one is just getting spammed with nudies and messages from other men asking for hookups. So here's a short intro. I work as a retail merchandiser. 
which means I work for my company and I'm no way associated with the stores I go to. I just service the store and leave. That's all I do. Now, while I'm a guest in the store, I have to be polite with the manager, but she has no power over me, like at all. So with that said, this happened last week. As mentioned before, all I do is put my company's product out and that's pretty much that. My company also doesn't have a dress code, just dress nicely and have your ID and lanyard that identifies you as the company's employee. At the store that I serve, there's a dress code. It's navy blue polos, khaki pants, a vest with the store's logo. Not that that matters. I was wearing a Captain America shirt and leggings. Now, for some reason, the manager of the store does not like my company, and I don't know why. My supervisor told me it's because of the lady before that had a sour relationship with the manager. And now I was pretty much inheriting a mess. Fun times. It was like Monday and I had just gotten done with my shipment. And I'm just putting my cart up and I'm signing out on the vendor log when this Karen of a manager marches up to me with a scowl on her face. Karen says to me, hey, what do you think you're doing? I say to her, uh, I'm signing out. I just finished putting out my shipment. Is there anything else I can help you with? Karen says, you can't do that. I didn't allow you to go home. You still have boxes to put away. Now, these boxes were filled with old product that has yet to be put away, and my boss has yet to discard them. So I tell Karen, oh, I know about those boxes. My boss is supposed to come by sometime next week and do something with them. Karen says to me, no, not those boxes, those boxes. She then points to a giant stack of boxes that were in no way affiliated with me. Those boxes had to be moved by the store's employees. And I just look at her like, what the F? I knew she didn't like the lady before me, but what the actual heck? This woman had no power over me, and at this point in my life, I'm learning to have a backbone. So me, as firm as I can, while still being polite, say, Hey, Miss Karen, look, I don't have to do anything for you that doesn't have anything to do with my company. At that, Karen says, I don't care. I saw you help one of my employees with a box and put it back on their cart. Now go do your job and move those boxes. I say to her, Miss Karen, it's not in my job description to move your product. In fact, I'm not allowed to use half the equipment that requires to move half this crap. When I said this, Karen the manager went ballistic, saying something like, I don't care if you work for that company. You are under my roof, so you do what I say. Don't make me call your supervisor because I will. At that, I just stand there. I get out my phone and say, fine, I'm sure my boss is gonna love to hear your reasoning. I then get my boss on the phone and put it on speaker, and my boss pretty much says, look, you don't pay her. I know she's a guest in your store, but that's all she is, a guest. You have no power over her. Leave her alone, and if you don't, I will speak to your manager. This seemed to simmer Karen down, but she left with a scowl. I then asked my boss what I should do, and my boss said that I handled it pretty well. And if I get any more grief, that I should call her immediately. And if it continues further, then contact her supervisor. Needless to say, this is going to be a troublesome relationship. I say that because this happened the other day. I had a large shipment, and it was taking me several hours to get everything out. I had been at the store since 7.30 in the morning, and it was now 11.30. I was down to three boxes when I decide that I just really need a break. Now my company's policy is if you're gonna take a break for more than 10 minutes, you have to clock out. And since it was near lunchtime, I figured I would take an early lunch. Also, the rule of thumb with my company is that lunch break should not be longer than one hour. So I take my cart into the stock room, tell the receiving clerk who will call Sarah that I'm going to eat some lunch and I should be back in about 20 minutes. Sarah then tells me this. She says, Oh, I was told that you're not allowed to leave. Karen said you can only take breaks when she says to. At that I say, uh, excuse me? Sarah says, oh, that's what Karen told me. You have to finish up your shipment before you can leave. I'm just the messenger. So just a little side note, at the store, they hate it when vendors leave boxes overnight. Now I don't normally leave the store until all my boxes are gone, but if I'm super tired, I will leave them at the store and go home. But normally, I'll just go take a break, come back, and finish up. Sarah goes on and says, Karen said you can't take breaks on your own time. And since she's not here to approve your break, you can't leave. You have to keep working. At that I say, no, I'm not gonna listen to her. I'll take my breaks whenever I want to take my breaks. 
Sarah says, yeah, you'll have to speak to Karen about this, and I don't think she's gonna be happy. Like I said, I'm just the messenger, and you can't leave without her permission. I say to her, I know Sarah, but Karen doesn't give me my paycheck. Sarah tells me, well, if you need to talk to Karen about this, take it up with her. She says this new policy applies to all employees in her store. Again I say, but I don't work for her. She knows I work for a different company, does this apply to all other vendors? Sarah then nods and says, yep, every single one. When you're in the store, Karen's the boss. Hearing that, I'm livid. I tell her that I'll be speaking to my boss about this, and hopefully it won't cause drama because I'm so done. Yeah, so the post ends right there, guys, but what a power-tripping boss, right? Like, controlling your own employees aren't enough, Karen. You have to boss around people who aren't even employed at the store. Yeah, like, first time, I would let that slide, guys, but a second time, I would definitely be bringing that up to her supervisor. Like, I'm sure they'd love to hear about how she's abusing every single vendor that comes into the store. And guys, I'm thinking the previous woman that was in OP's position was also bossed around by this Karen, and she refused, and OP inherited the bad position. Like, some people really shouldn't be in management positions at all. So this literally just happened. I'm in Vegas for the weekend with friends. I have work on Monday, so I'm flying out tonight, and my friends are staying one more night. We were a big group, so we booked a three-bedroom suite. It was 4pm, and I went back to my room to pack up and head to the airport for my 7pm flight. When I get back to my room, there's like a 40-year-old dude banging loudly on the room next to mine. I say to him, hey dude, what's up, are you okay? The guy says, I lost my room key and my buddies passed out. I say to him, oh, that sucks, but I'm sure the front desk can give you another key. The guy says to me, I tried that, but they won't give me a key because my name's not on the room. At this point I say, oh, that sucks, good luck. I then unlock and enter my room to start packing. About 30 seconds later, there's now someone pounding on my door. I'm trying to pack, but I go answer it, and what a shocker, it's the dude. I ask him, what's up? The guy says, so I know you're busy cleaning this room, but can you let me into my room? It's right next door. I have a confused face on and say, huh? The guy says, my room, let me in my room. He then says in very poor Spanish, Mi habitación, por favor. I say to him, what? With an even more confused face. He then says, you habla inglés? Again, bad Spanish. I say to him, of course I speak English. I was just talking to you in the hallway two minutes ago. You watched me walk into this room. The guy then says, so why won't you help me? You have to clean my room next, so why won't you let me in now instead of giving me a hard time? At this moment, I now realize that he thinks I'm housekeeping. And that's when I say, oh, sorry, dude, I can't help you. I actually don't work here. I'm just another guest. I then start shutting the door, and that's when the guy sticks his foot in the door so I can't close it. He then says, oh, okay, well, can I try your key then? At that I say, nope, I'm sorry, I don't have a master key, so my room key won't work on your door. The guy then screams at me saying, give me your key now. I say to him, no, I'm not giving my room key to a strange man, and I know it won't work on your room anyways. All it'll do is let you into my room, and I don't want you in my room. The guy says to me, you never know, it might work. I'm desperate, can I try it? Why can't you help me out? I say to him, no, you're a stranger, I'm not giving you my room key. The guy's not giving up, and he says, can I at least try it? You never know, it might unlock. Again I say, it's not gonna work, and I'm definitely not gonna give you my room key. But if you take your foot out of my door, I'll go find my key, and I can try it on your room. Now I'll admit, I really just wanted the dude to move his foot so I could close my door. I had no intention of getting my room key to try on his door, as I know it's not gonna work anyway, and this dude is being a total a-hole, so I have no desire to help him. So I close the door and go back to packing. Two minutes later, the dude starts pounding on my door again. I just ignore it and continue packing, but the guy won't stop. After 10 minutes, I just want to shut the guy up, and get him to stop pounding on my door. So against my better judgment, I go find my key, and I figure I'll just swipe it on his lock and he can see it won't work, and then he'll leave me alone. I say to him, dude, this really isn't going to work, but I'm gonna try my key, just please promise me that you're gonna stop pounding on my door. The guy says to me, took you long enough? 
What were you doing in there? Why do cleaners always take so long? I ignore his question, go up to his door, and swipe my key. And what a surprise, the lock blinks red and the key doesn't work. I then say to him, see, my key doesn't work on your room, now please leave me alone. I then turn to go back to my room, and the guy demands, try it again. I say to him, it's not gonna work, rooms are individually keyed at hotels. I then dart around him, slip my key in the door, and manage to close the door before he can follow me inside. The dude now goes back to slamming his fist on my door, and he's yelling, you dumb effing bitch, let me in, let me in, open the door right now. Effing open this door right now. So at this point, I'm terrified. I call security from the room phone, and they promise to send someone up. I finish packing while the banging and screaming continues. Luckily, the three bedroom suites are two stories, so after I finished packing, I went downstairs in the room, and I was able to escape from the downstairs entrance without the guy seeing me. I'm now in a car heading to the airport, and my friends are heading back to the room. Hopefully security's gotten rid of him by now. I'll update this if I hear anything from my friends. Update. Number 1. So for some additional context to set the scene, I learned later that that weekend, the hotel was hosting the AVN Awards, aka the Adult Film Oscars. So the hotel was filled with adult stars, webcam girls, guys trying to sleep with them, etc. So to be honest, it never actually occurred to me that that guy could have been interested in attacking me. Number 2. From when I got off the elevator until I escaped the downstairs exit, the total time period was roughly 10 to 12 minutes. Number 3. When my friends returned upstairs, about 5 minutes after I left, they saw security escorting a dude out, who looked like the same guy I described. He was in plastic zip tie looking restraints, and he was yelling. Number 4. By the time I landed back home, I had already had a voicemail from my casino host checking on me, and apologizing for the incident and assuring me they had fully addressed the issue, whatever that means. So yeah, my initial thought, guys, was he was trying to rob that hotel room or something. But with OP coming back with that update, a lot of people are saying that OP might have avoided a potential horrible situation that evening. This person comments, you have no idea if this guy was ever a guest in the hotel. He probably didn't force the door open when he had the chance because he wanted to borrow your key. He wanted to try it and then come back and let himself in quietly when you're distracted, away from the door and your guard was down. Also, that gives him plausible deniability if he gets caught. Saying something like, it's consensual, I have her key right here. That may be why he was so adamant that you give him the key. You don't know if he spotted you elsewhere in the hotel, followed you, and then appeared to bang on his friend's door at the right time. The guy's story, which handily explains why he seems desperate and has no hotel key, seems constructed to elicit sympathy. So yeah, we'll never know guys, we can only speculate, right? I'm just glad Opie and her friends are safe and that dude was escorted out by security. So this happened about a year or two ago. I used to live in a community that sometimes one could get signed up for events that a group of people would go on together. And during the Halloween season, several of us wanted to go on a hayride. As it was my last year before I moved out, I decided to go too. So myself and a handful of people went on this hayride, though I'm not close to any of them. So upon getting there, it's a pretty normal trip. We had a group leader who was in charge of tickets, we had someone in charge of snacks, and somehow I ended up being in charge of calming people down if they got too scared. There was this one girl who lived next door to me, and she wanted to go, but she was a huge chicken, so she was already clutching my arm scared. I would just pat her head and say soothing things and pretty much explain what all the scary things were, or pretty much deny they were there for her. This did calm her down, but yeah, she was still clutching my arm, and this continued onto the hayride. I was trying to calm her down, as she was already spooked, and complimented her for trying so hard to learn something new. She only stopped when we saw a young woman and man get onto the hayride with children that were clearly too young for it. For crying out loud, the woman was breastfeeding the smallest one while we waited for the ride to start. The family sat next to me near the front of the hayride. This was a tactic seating since less scarier stick around the front part. Like yes, you get scared at first, but if you have a good eye, you can spot the scares before they happen. So I just looked at the small children and said, Hello, how old are you? Are you excited? Do you watch scary movies? I asked that trying to gauge their possible fear level. Since what would scare me more is if I was going to be with constant screamers. The girl smiled. One says, I'm five. The other girl says, I'm eight. Mommy says we're strong kids. The mother and father were not paying attention to their kids at all, and they were talking about the ride to each other. 
I sighed, knowing I wasn't going to have a fun ride. I already had to calm down one person, and now I was worried I'd have to calm down more. My neighbor clung to my arm, whispering her fears in my ears as the hayride shook about going down the path. We then come to the person that would tell us about the ride and its rules. I then felt small hands creeping onto my other arm and one of my legs. I sighed, thinking this was my fate. There was nothing scary yet, and now three people were clinging to me scared. And I don't even know why. I explained to them that this person was not going to do anything to them. So after the introduction, the hayride really started. Around me was a trio of screams as I became sandwiched between three people, clinging to me as they screamed. I just reassured them and sighed. The eight-year-old was clinging hard on my arm. And I said, excuse me, if you're gonna cling to me, can I have my one arm free? You can grab my waist or my jacket or even my leg. I just need to be able to signal that you're too scared to the staff. The girl then grabbed the waistband of my jacket and curled up under my arm, as her sister now climbed onto my lap, hiding her face in my chest. I then waved to the parents and said, uh, your children are scared, do you want to do something about it? At that, the mom just laughs, and she says, she's sure I can handle it because it's my job to deal with scared kids. After that, the parents ignored me each time I tried to get their attention. So I gave up after a while and focused on the fact that the girls clinging to me were terrified. I did each of my tricks to calm down the trio. I spoke kindly and softly, explained things, and even told them when not to look. The hayride ended after an hour or so, I'm not even sure, it felt like forever to me. The people started getting off, and that's when the parents noticed their kids at last. They said, kids, can you get off the worker, the hayride's done. Did you have fun with that nice scare master lady? The girls let me go and thanked me. And I said, uh, excuse me, what? I don't work here, I'm not an employee. The father just chuckles and says, yeah, end the scary ride with some humor, I love it. I said again that I was being serious, but the mother and father were not listening. They were walking off with their kids, who were waving goodbye to me. I had no idea what they were thinking. An employee asked me how the ride was as I got off. I told her, apparently I work here, so it sucked. I didn't get to enjoy it, all thanks to those people. I and my neighbor then rejoined the group from before. They said to me, I didn't know you were meeting friends, you should have told us. I told them I wasn't, they thought I worked here, can we go home now? When I got home, I found marks on my arms, legs, and torso from the girls clinging to me too hard. In the end, no one really listened to me and I didn't get to enjoy anything. So yeah, next time I'm going with a friend only. Oh man, that totally sucks for OP. And the worst part is, the parents thought OP was joking when she said she wasn't an employee. And even if OP was an employee, like how entitled do you have to be to assume that it's an employee's job to babysit your kids? Some parents, right? So darn entitled. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash petty revenge episode, where a Karen keeps trying to get OP fired, and OP destroys her career, guys. It's such a crazy story. So go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.